We've got five minutes left. I want to go to one hard one. So let's go to the intermediate one. By the way, these are only easy in relation to the others. I didn't mean to insinuate that these are trivial and like you should already know them. Like you're learning it now. That's totally fine. Um, if they're, you know, it's a more of a relative scale. At some point, these will be like, okay, this is straightforward, and then this one becomes the interesting ones. Um, but let's, so let's look at the intermediate one. So read that and spend a few minutes on it. And there's, there's a pretty important clue in it. Yeah. What we're going to do, we're going to make an object that that um, I'm going to I'm going to describe the initial value at, um, f at first. So the initial value is going to be a list of two things. The first thing is going to be the the sum so far, and then the second thing is going to be the count of elements consumed. So we have to hold this in our head when we look at the lambda. So at each point in the, um, in the uh, accumulation, that's going to be the nature of the object that gets passed up. And that will be the initial, the, uh, you know, the, the thing that goes initial in, I'm going to put this on the screen too. This object will go into this position. All right, Jessica, I see your hand. No? Wait. Let, let me just like keep going because we only have a minute left. Sorry. Um, okay. So here, here's what the lambda is going to do. So it's going to be combining two operations. It's going to be counting and adding. So it's going to receive a value and it's going to receive a prior accumulation, which is an object that looks like that. What is V? It's each number in the list. So, so what does it have to do? It has to create a new object like this by incorporating the object that's been given as P and then the, the new item that we've encountered. So it's going to make a new list. The first item in the list is the result of adding V, which is the number we're receiving, to the prior sum. So we're going to add together V and car of P. Remember, this thing got named P when our function kicked off. That's the, that becomes the, the new sum in the position of a new list. And then what's the second item in the list? We're just going to increment the count. So we'll add one. How do we extract the count out of this P object? Ca yeah, catter. Car of the cutter. Catter of V. Thank you. So that, that's it. That's the lambda expression that will do this work. Then at the end, we're going to get this, this list of two numbers. To get the average, we have to divide the car by the catter. So it doesn't directly, it's a little bit like sleight of hand. It doesn't actually give you the average. It gives you the two numbers from which you can compute the average. Okay, um, Jennifer asked, would it be easier to use cons instead of lists? That would be fine. You could use cons here, then you'd use cutter there. The only difference is um, you would, in, in order to construct the initial case, you'd have to cons together uh, the two zeros because they wouldn't be a list, they'd be a con cell. In general, from, as a style standpoint, if you're making a compound object with two things, it's still stylistically better to make it into a list. That's it. Okay, um, see you guys on Friday.